Welcome to Honuea Ike, where we will explore the Hawaiian hawksbill sea turtle, or as we call them in Hawaii, Honuea or Ea. We are really excited to share about this special animal. We hope you enjoy learning about their cultural significance, how you can identify them, their life cycle, and how to help protect them. Aloha, my name is Callie and I work with Hawaii Wildlife Fund. We're really excited to be bringing you this Honuea Ike curriculum. And we hope that by the end of it, you'll be as passionate and excited about protecting Honuea as we are. Now you might be wondering who is Hawaii Wildlife Fund or HWF as we say. Well, it's a highly effective nonprofit organization whose mission is to protect native wildlife of Hawaii. And we do this through research, education, and conservation projects. We were founded in 1996 by Hannah Bernard and Bill Gilmartin. They're also our executive director and vice president, respectively. Megan, over there on the right of them, is our president. We're a team of biologists, conservationists, and environmental educators. And for more than 24 years, Hawaii Wildlife Fund has worked to protect sea turtles. Now here's the backstory. In 1993 and 1996, two egg-laden hawksbills and numerous hatchlings were killed by cars while trying to cross North Kihei Road in Maui. Hawaii Wildlife Fund launched its Hawksbill Recovery Project in 1996 in partnership with US Fish and Wildlife Service to volunteer and patrol this beach nightly and construct a fence to help keep turtles off the road and protect the eroded dune habitat. Thus began the first systematic monitoring and research of the species on Maui. Since then, we have learned so much about Honuea nesting, hatching, and foraging behaviors. So fast forward to today, where we get to include you on the Hawaii Wildlife Fund journey of learning about protecting Honuea. There are several different species of sea turtles that may be found in Hawaii, but we can organize them into a couple of groups. Let's start with the coastal sea turtles, the Honuea and Honu. They both forage along the coastlines, but Honuea only come ashore to nest. Honu, however, can come ashore to nest or bask. You can see basking Honu at beaches like Punalu'u on Hawaii Island or Ho'okipa on Maui where Hawaii Wildlife Fund helps educate the public about how to enjoy turtles respectfully. Check out that sign. Enjoy from a distance. Please never feed the turtles. Please never touch or handle sea turtles. And please use extreme caution when fishing. Show turtles aloha. Now pelagic or open ocean living sea turtles, the leatherback, loggerhead, and olive ridley forage and live mostly in the deep sea and only come ashore to nest. Olive Ridleys and Leatherbacks have nested in Hawaii, but it's extremely rare. On other rare occasions, loggerheads can be seen in Hawaii's nearshore waters. For the most part though, you'll see honu or green sea turtles as they are the most commonly seen species of turtles in Hawaii. Let's dive deeper. Though there are hawksbills found elsewhere in the world, the Honuea is isolated from all other populations. Honuea are critically endangered sea turtles due to overexploitation, loss of habitat, pollution, and predation by invasive species. As our reefs decline, so does the health of the Honuea. Protection started 40 plus years ago when they were declared endangered in 1970. When mature, they weigh between 100 to 250 pounds and can be 25 to 37 inches long, or two to three feet. How many meters is that? Go ahead, pause the video if you like, and do the math. It's great practice. It's 0.6 to 0.9 meters. It's not known exactly how long they can live, but green turtles live to be around 80 in Hawaii. Also very important to know, Hawksbills have historical and cultural significance to Hawaii and Hawaiians. Traditionally, sea turtles were incorporated into native Hawaiian cultural practices, religious ceremonies, and diet. 
Honuea shells, bones, and oil were used to make fish hooks, tools, medicine, combs, and jewelry. Honuea and Honu are even mentioned in the Hawaiian creation, creation story, or Kumulipo. It's important to note that Honuea were not often eaten as they can be toxic due to their diet. Honua, however, were eaten and harvest was tightly regulated by traditional management practices of the kapu system, which was a code of conduct and cultural roles for ancient Hawaiians. This kapu system was enacted by chiefs or ali'i. Some individuals or families did not take or consume honu either. Rather, they were thought of as family de deities or alma kua and were worshiped and cared for. Historically, honu were abundant and nested throughout the entire Hawaiian archipelago. However, after European colonization, the kapu system broke down and by the 20th century, harvesting had become commercialized, causing the honus and honuea numbers to fall abruptly. Unfortunately, today, populations are still declining. Whereas honu are making a comeback, Honuea continue to decline. Let's explore these two turtles further and see if we might be able to spot some differences. Honuea versus Honu. How can you tell them apart? Take a minute or two by pausing this video and see if you can spot any differences between these two turtles. Go ahead, pause. Was it a little bit difficult to tell these two turtles apart? Well, it can be, but don't worry. We're gonna take a closer look. You'll be identifying hawksbills in no time. Honuea versus Honu. How can you tell them apart? Well, there are four main ways to tell Honuea and Honu apart, starting with their prefrontal scales. In these two photos, you can see that Honuea on the left have four scales on their heads. On the other hand, honu have two. And yes, sea turtles have scales. They are marine reptiles after all. The second way to tell these sea turtles apart is by their carapace or shell. The plates that make up their shells are called scoots and look like little puzzle pieces made of the same protein as your hair or nails. On Honuea, the scoots overlap like shingles on a roof and are pointy along the imbricatus, or edge of the shell. On the Honu, the scoots don't overlap and have definite margins like tiles on a countertop. And the imbricatus, or edge of the shell, is more rounded. Also, if you look closely at these diagrams, you can see that Honuea have two claws on their front flippers and Honu only have one. Let's take a look at pictures. You can see, if you look closely, that the hawksbill's scoots overlap, whereas the honus are more like tiles, kind of with grout in between them. And check out the imbricatus, or the edge of the shell on the honuea, how pointy it is in comparison to the honu. And one other thing that you could look at are those back flippers. Look how much smaller they are on that honuea than they are in the honu. The third way to tell honu and honuea apart is by their beaks. What might be some reasons their beaks are shaped differently? Think about it. Did anyone say diet? Honuea have narrow and pointed hawk-like beaks, enabling them to reach into small holes and crevices in coral reefs to find sponges or other invertebrates like crustaceans and worms. While honu, greater than about seven inches in size, generally eat only limu or algae and seagrasses. All right, the fourth and final way to tell them apart, let's imagine for a minute that you're a turtle and your front arms are now flippers. Your legs too. Show me how you'd replicate the tracks of the honuea and honu. Notice the center line of the tracks too. It's a bit more wavy for hawksbills and straight for greens. Go for it, try it out, make some guesses, get silly. All right, 
here we go. I'm gonna demonstrate for you what each of these turtles looks like. Let's start. Which one do you think that is? It's the Honuea. It alternates its flippers, making more of curvy lines in the sand. Now let's do the Honu. Honu, they use both their front flippers at the same time and their body doesn't have to move as much. So it keeps that line nice and straight. Did you guess right? Were you able to imitate them correctly? Soon we're going to be seeing some photos and videos of Honu Ea. And because these awesome sea turtles are protected by the Endangered Species Act, we are required by law to share this information. And it's important for you to know too. Here we go. All monitoring and excavation activities are carried out by trained Hawaii Wildlife Fund biologists and volunteers operating under endangered species permits with state and federal agency partners and following CDC, Maui County and state guidelines to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Never touch, approach or harass sea turtle hatchlings or adults in the wild. Now that we've got the law in the books, let's take a look at the life cycle of the Honuea. We'll review each stage briefly here and then dive deeper in the following slides. We'll first go over reproduction. This is when sexually mature females come ashore to lay their nests. The next and most likely the cutest stage of the life cycle is the hatchling stage or when they emerge from their sandy nests. And next, we'll look at the lost years. We'll explore what hatchlings may or may not be doing out there in the big blue ocean. And lastly, we'll cover adulthood. Let's go. So females are sexually mature between the ages of 20 and 25. It's estimated that there are approximately 100 nesting females in Hawaii. And of that 100, only about 15 to 25 of those females nest in each year. Our Hawaii Wildlife team on Maui tracks females starting as soon as they are sighted coming ashore to lay their nests and we even get to ta satellite tag some of them. Our work has shown that hawksbill sea turtles do not migrate away from Hawaii, but move between foraging and nesting grounds in the main Hawaiian islands. These amazing turtles lay between one and six nests, each with about 200 eggs or up to 1,200 eggs per season. The Hawaii Island Hawksbill Recovery Project team out of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park monitors the nesting activity on Hawaii Island. Teamwork makes the dream work. Now, most of the nesting occurs on Hawaii Island, Maui, Molokai, and then Oahu, respectively. And this is all happening between May and December. Let's take a look at these coastal nesting areas. Hawaii Wildlife Fund and partners are able to affix satellite tags or transmitters to the carapace of female Honuea. As you can see here, this is Ole Pau fitted with the satellite tracker. And here is Orion fitted with the similar satellite tracker heading back to sea. Using the data shared by these satellite trackers, Hawaii Wildlife Fund and partners are able to produce maps that show us where Honuea nest. Take a minute and look at the key of the map. What shape represents the area with the largest average nest per season? All right, so if you figured that out, anyone know what district on Hawaii Island contains greater than 90% of all nests throughout the main Hawaiian Islands? It's the Kau District. Greater than 90% of nests are found in just this one place, which is crazy because tons of marine debris washes up in this area too, but we'll talk about that later. Back to the map, you can see that there are also nests on Moloka'i, who comes in next, followed by Maui, then O'ahu and Lanai. All of these areas though are important habitat for nesting females. Let's move on. These little cuties incubate for about two months before they emerge from their eggs and crawl from the nest. Our team of volunteers and researchers identify and mitigate threats when able to help the hatchings make it safely to the ocean. It's a difficult journey. Check out this little guy or gal's journey navigating grass. 
Unfortunately, only about 1 in 1,000 hatchlings survive to sexual maturity. Some Hawksbill conservationists say it's more like 1 in 5,000. In the end, that's at best a couple from each mother turtle that lays nests. And as you can see, even this grass, which is native Akiyaki, is a formidable obstacle for these little hatchlings. Invasive grasses trip them up even more and can even entangle them in the nest. Much is unknown about the first few years of Honuea, such as what do they eat or where exactly do they live? Juvenile turtles are believed to occupy the pelagic zone or open sea, taking shelter and floating algal mats and drift lines of natural and man-made marine debris. We do know that after a few years in the pelagic zone, small juveniles migrate to shallower coastal feeding grounds. Some young have been seen on leeward or the west sides of Hawaii and Maui Islands. In the post-hatchling phase, when they first enter the ocean, their color, shape, and size are identified by scientists as adaptations for hanging out in our shallow coastal areas or neuritic zones. On the expected hatching date, Hawaii Wildlife Fund and other governmental and nonprofit partners protect and excavate these nests, collecting data and ensuring that as many hatchlings as possible make it successfully to the ocean. Hawaii Wildlife Fund has helped over 10,000 hatchlings make their way to the ocean over the past 24 years. It's crazy, but only 1% of those super cute hatchlings even reach the next stage of the life cycle, adulthood. Adult honuea are omnivorous, meaning they feed both on plants and animals. And they'll eat mollusks, marine algae, crustaceans, sea urchins, sea worms, small fish, and jellyfish. In the photo on the left, you can see a honuea eating what I believe to be is a frogfish. The shape of their mouth and their sharp beaks enable them to reach into small holes and crevices in coral reefs to find food. In Hawaii, they tend to be opportunistic, eating whatever they can though their favorite food is our sponges. Fun fact, due to their diets, honuea are often toxic and they were eaten less often than their honu counterparts. Let's take a closer look at a very special hawksbill, Mama Hua, a female who is satellite tagged to identify where she as well as other adults are believed to be foraging. Hawaii Wildlife Fund and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and Pacific Islands Fishery Science Center all collaborated to equip the hawksbill Mama Hua with a satellite tag after she finished laying her fifth nest of the summer. Notice the red light in the photo. This color light is used around turtles as bright white light can scare and disorient them. By outfitting her with this satellite tag, we are hoping to find out where Mama Hua is foraging. Mama Hua is the 12th hawksbill turtle that Hawaii Wildlife Fund has monitored and tagged on Maui since 1996. So far, we can see where Mama Hua went directly after nesting. She hung out in the Kihei area and then traveled all the way to the other side of Maui. Check out this map completed from multiple tagged Honuea. This long-term tagging project has revealed that Hawaii's hawksbill turtles primarily remain within the main Hawaiian islands for their adult lives and do not migrate away from the archipelago, but they do migrate between neighboring islands after nesting. Their primary foraging areas are Hamakua, Ka'u, and Maui Nui. You can even see Mama Hua's updated track on the Integrated Ocean Observing Systems Animal Telemetry Network. Let's check it out. And really, you should take some of your own time and check out this website and play with some of the features that we might not be able to get to today. So over here on the left, we see a map similar to the one that was on our slide of all the data points where Mama Hua has been. And then we can come on over here to this map, which is really neat, and we can get it to auto rotate. And we can look at exactly where she's been with specific dates. So if we look at where she's been within the last week, that's this area in blue here. And if I stop auto-rotating it, we can actually see that that's Kahalui, Maui. 
um, near Kahului, Maui, the north side of Maui, and um, near Kaihu Beach, incidentally, another place that collects large amounts of marine debris. So if you want to keep updated on Mama Hua, you can always come here to this website. Let's take a closer look at some of the threats facing Honuea today. The first is bycatch in nearshore and pelagic fisheries, especially via shoreline fishing, lay nets, and gill nets. Bycatch is a non-target fish and other marine creatures caught during commercial fishing operations. The second is entanglement and ingestion of marine debris. In a global review of all studies on sea turtles ingesting marine debris, ingestion incident rates are highest in green and loggerhead sea turtles. But when corrected for mass or weight of the turtle, all of Ridley and Hawksbill sea turtles were found to consume the most marine debris per their body weight. On a global scale, it is estimated that up to 52% or more than half of turtles in the world may have ingested marine plastic. And not only is ingestion an issue with marine debris, but so is entanglement. Suji, or monofilament line, is particularly dangerous here in Hawaii. The third threat to Honuea is on land. When they are in the nest or hatching, native and non-native predators, including ghost crabs, mongoose, cats, rats, and dogs can destroy nests and eat hatchlings. These predators can snip out nests in sand, dig up eggs, or even prey on hatchlings as they emerge from the nest. Even native predators, such as ghost crabs, can be a significant threat to young hatchlings trying to make their way to the ocean. The fourth threat to sea turtles is light pollution along beaches, as you can see in this photo of the Honolulu coastline. These lights can scare nesting mothers and disorient hatchlings. Remember, turtles dig the dark. The fifth threat is the new and growing crisis of climate change. Climate change leads to sea level rise, which can result in the loss of nesting beaches, as you can see depicted in the three top photos. The nest on the left had to be translocated to a different location after being inundated by the tide. And the top middle and top right pictures show how closely the tide came to inundating this nest. Warming and acidifying oceans result in bleaching and low recruitment of coral reefs and thus a loss of foraging habitat and prey for sea turtles, as you can see some bleached coral in the bottom left corner. A warming atmosphere also increases extreme weather events such as hurricanes that destroy reefs and can alter sex ratios of turtles in the nest. Warming incubation temperatures in the sand could mean disproportionately more females. As someone who cares deeply about protecting Honuea and other native wildlife, it can be a little overwhelming to be aware of all the threats facing them today. Fortunately, there are many ways we can take action to help. So what can you do? Well, you can volunteer to clean a beach, or if you can't get to the beach, you can clean a nearby waterway or storm drain. In this video, you can check out what it's like to volunteer with us for a day. It's pretty fun, even though the job is pretty tough. On Hawaii Island, we clean up marine debris from along the Kau coastline, helping prevent any entanglement or ingestion issues. Between 15 to 20 tons of marine debris wash up here every year, the same place where most nesting occurs, which is one of the reasons our team focuses on marine debris removal efforts on this coastline. Over the past 25 years, Hawaii Wildlife Fund's team and volunteers have removed almost 350 tons of marine debris. That's like 1,400 Hawaiian monk seals, approximately 500 pounds each, or the weight of 28 school buses, or in other words, a lot of debris. Let's take a look at this video.
So what else can you do? You could always apply for an internship and get job experience as well. With Hawaii Wildlife Fund or another organization helping to protect Honuea or other sea turtles. In this photo, you'll see our executive director and founder on the left and Hawaii Wildlife Fund's intern, Alyssa, on the right. Alyssa wrote a really cool blog about her internship with HWF. And if you're interested in reading it, you can find it on our website at wildhawaii.org. Go check it out. See if it's something that you might want to do. So what else can you do? You could try and eat more sustainably. You could know where your fish comes from and how it was caught. If you're a local fisherman or know a local fisherman, you can use and support the use of barbless circle hooks. The removal of the barb on fishing hooks can help greatly in removing hooks from accidentally caught honuea. You can make sure that you pick up any monofilament suji line that you see in the water or on the shore from local fishers. In Hawaii, suji line is especially hazardous to sea turtles and leads to many, many entanglement and strangling incidents. Additionally, you can download the Seafood Watch app and check to make sure you are making sustainable seafood choices. There's more to do though. In this one, you get to adopt a honuea. Adoption helps support Hawaii Wildlife Fund's work to protect honuea habitat and nests. Hawaii Wildlife Fund protects Honuea throughout their life cycle, has the experience, expertise, and permitting necessary to do this work. It's an effective way to help us continue our research, education, and conservation efforts. What else can you do? You can get civically engaged. Hawaii Wildlife Fund has led countless campaigns to protect our native ecosystems and has even been all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Hawaii Wildlife Fund took Maui County to court over wastewater being injected into wells by the ocean without a proper permit and therefore not enough treatment to protect the health, to protect the health of the reef. And we won! Not only can you support organizations that are civically engaged, you could create one. Dyson Chi, a high schooler that with Hawaii Wildlife Fund's mentorship has helped tackle the problem of plastic pollution and bring attention to many different bills locally that affect how our islands handle pollution. He started a nonprofit of his own called Project Ocean Hawaii. You can find him on Instagram. And don't worry, there's still more that you can do. Have you been lucky enough to see a rare hawksbill while snorkeling or diving? If you find a new hawksbill, you can name it. Hawaii Wildlife Fund collaborates with the statewide hawksbill research network, coordinated by National Marine Fisheries Service, to assist in monitoring and tracking hawksbill sea turtles in Hawaii. In 2000, Hawaiian hawksbill conservationist and past Hawaii Wildlife Fund turtle team member Cheryl King started the statewide in-water photo ID catalog, which provides valuable information on this species. Hawaii Wildlife Fund has supported this effort since that time by collecting pictures and observational data and coordinating the database through 2015. This program is now managed and curated by Hawaiian Hawksbills Conservation. And here's their wanted poster. Please send them photos and information uh, such as the turtle's location, habitat, depth, and behavior to hawaiihawksbills.org. As of October 2020, 249 unique individual hawksbills have been identified. And finally, the last what can you do slide that we have. It's simple. You can get outdoors, enjoy Hawaii, share what you've learned here today, and be a good steward, not just for Honuea, but all of the special wildlife and plants that we have here in Hawaii and share any sightings you might have to organizations helping conserve this species. And here's a pro tip. Add important numbers and contact information into your phone for easy access. You never know when you might come across a hawk's bill. Maybe you'll see one while snorkeling, diving, or enjoying an evening stroll on the beach. There are many ways you can get involved in caring for Honuea and that matter for wildlife. 
If you have any questions or want more information about how you can help, there are several places you can reach us. Online, via email, via Instagram, and on Facebook. We at Hawaii Wildlife Farm really appreciate you taking the time to participate in this presentation. We are excited to bring back part two for you, the Honuea survival game. So mahalo nui and ahui ho.